Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, Crafty Family, it's me. And today I'm going to show you how to do a fun mixed media background that looks like this. Um, it's very easy and it takes pretty much nothing to make and it comes out really cool and very dimensional and just interesting and you'll be surprised at how easy it is to do. So all you need to do this is a tag and some cardstock, some old cardstock that you have laying around, white preferably, um, and all you need to do is just start ripping it up and make sure there's none of the straight edges left on it. So that's the first thing you'll do is just go along and get rid of all the straight edge. And everybody has a piece of cardstock laying around that you know is left over from something. And then you're going to rip small pieces because that's all that is is paper. It's just layered pieces of cardstock and you just want little pieces. If you're doing a tag, you want to keep it small. You don't want them to be any more than an inch. Um, and you're just going to rip them off, you know, random sizes, random shapes. Now, if you're doing like, you could do this on a canvas. And if you're doing a canvas, then obviously you could do larger pieces. Um, but you wouldn't want to do too much larger, maybe no more than like one and a half inches to maybe two inches. Um, you don't want them to be even or perfect in any way. You kind of want them to be like all different. Just rip a bunch up because we're going to layer quite a few. Another piece. Rip the edge off of it first. Hmm. It's not hard to do, and it comes out really cool looking, as you can see. And it's something that you don't have to use anything special on. You don't have to buy anything. Everything else that you're going to do, you pretty much already have all the stuff for. So, you won't need to purchase anything. So, I'm going to start with that many and see if I need any more after that. So, you're going to take Aileen's glue. And the trick to this is you're not going to be putting glue on the whole thing. You're only going to put glue on like half of it. So you're going to put glue on half of it and you're just going to put it down. And when you put it down, you're going to peel up the other half. Um, you know, like make sure it's sticking up while you hold down that half. So I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see a little better. Let me see. Get you zoomed in a bit so you can see what exactly I'm doing. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the pieces and I'm just putting glue on like half of it and then I'm putting it down in different directions, in different ways, um, willy-nilly, just random. And basically, like, he, like I did here, you know, you could do it in three sections. Like here, I kind of did it here, here, and here, and I kind of connected them so it made this kind of zigzag. But you don't have to connect it, but... If you work in threes on things, it, it tends to make it look a little bit more cohesive and better. So, um, so do it in like three sections or like a, a line like that, or, you know, go that way or go this way, or, you know, just do it in some, somehow kind of do it in like three sections. It'll look better, whether you're doing it on a canvas or whatever, you know, whatever you want to do it on, it'll work in that way and you just want to layer some underneath layer some on top 
make them go in different directions. You don't, that's the, that's the thing too. You want to make sure they're kind of going in all different directions so that they're not kind of all laying exactly the same way. Um, this way, like you can have some of them hanging off the paper, hanging off the tag some. But it's kind of fun because it's like mindless and you don't really have to think about it very much. You just do it, you know. And yeah, your hands are probably going to get all gluey. But, you know, that's all right. Don't worry about it if glue gets all over. It's not a big deal. No big deal. And then I'll do some down here. But it gives a really cool kind of effect when it's all done. You don't have to worry about them sticking up too much in this section. Just um, You just don't want them to be uh, glued, accidentally glued all the way down by putting one on top of an area where, you know, that's the reason why I want you to lift them up right now is so that you can kind of see where they are so you don't accidentally, like if it's glued, you know, if you have it kind of flat, you might glue on top of this and not see that it's you know, the non-glued section, I guess. So I'm just going to do that for a while. Takes a few minutes. I need to clean up the glue because I keep getting stuck in it. And don't be afraid to, like, layer on top of each other a little bit, you know, so that you have a little bit more dimension and depth going. easy to do. Very easy to do actually. All right, and then I'll stick some up here. I probably need a few more. And I can't believe I've never done this on my channel before because I've done this for a while, this little technique. Um, I mean, I don't, I looked, I took a look at, to see if anybody else had come up with this technique because I came up with it a long time ago, but you never know, you know, on YouTube, you know, the same person or different people could have the same idea, obviously. So I just wanted to make sure there wasn't somebody else that already did it, but I didn't see anybody. So, um, you never know. So, yeah, I did this, I start. I did this a long time ago when I didn't really have, I, I want to say that there was something I wanted to do and I didn't have one of the things you needed to do it. And so this was my, this was an alternative idea that I came up with to do that with, but I don't remember what it was that made me do this. 
it was probably just for texture who knows I don't you know beats me you know my memory's so bad I don't remember why the hell or what made me decide to do this but it was something obviously it was something <laughs> beats me but I showed it in um, when I was trying to think of techniques to do for the class that we did um, like a week and a half ago or so we did a techniques class for the patreon and I was like oh yeah I should show them that because duh you know it just popped in my head because I was like thinking of different background techniques and stuff um, and I was doing some research and and then I thought, well, what's something else? Because I know there's a couple of things, like somewhere in my brain of things that I've come up with like a while ago. And I don't remember sometimes. And usually something has to trigger. What I should have done instead of being an idiot was when I had come up with a new background of some sort that I thought was kind of cool. You know, I should have written it down or saved a sample of it and wrote on the back what the heck it was. Because, you know... Little did I know I was going to, you know, forget so soon because it was only, you know, some of them I only came up with, you know, five, six years ago. And I mean, you would think I would, could remember that, but this one, you know, I, I've had my channel for what, over three years and this one just popped into my head to do. <laughs> Goes to show you where my freaking brain is. It's somewhere else. It's not around here. It's lost. Alright. Oh, and sometimes like if they're kind of squarish, if you kind of fold it on an angle so that the half that you put down is like so it sticks up kind of Cause you don't want them to all be like perfectly square looking because then they will you know you want them to have like points and like weird things because if they're all perfectly the same kind of shape and size they might not you know work as well or look as good now these are a little bit more flattened out because as we do things, we're going to kind of flatten them out a little bit, but you don't have to. I mean, you can leave them. They'll, they'll end up staying pretty, you know, layered if you want them to be. You know, it just depends on what you, how you end up making them. And, you know, at the end, you'll see what I mean. But I like to make sure that there, some of them are layered on top of each other a little bit so that you have a little bit of, a little bit of, just a little dimension along with it. So they're not so like perfecty perfecty.
Okay, I think that's probably pretty good. Do it in three sections like that. Now, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Mm. Glue everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to take the heat gun to it a minute. Um, you can just fast forward through this part if it bothers you, but I'm just going to give it a quick heat. I'm not going to take too long on it. Now, normally you would wait until, you know, make sure this was completely dry before you did the next step. But I'm not going to worry about it being completely dry. Like I said, you, you're going to want to make sure it's drier than this. Um, now I did pretty much cover up my hole. Not really. I guess it's not really that covered. If I finagle that piece, it wouldn't be. My little tag hole. Sorry, I, I have a tendency to go off camera if I zoom in too much. But I will try not to. Now you can use any sprays you want. Um, I might put one more piece over here. You can use any sprays that you your heart desires. Um, they don't have to be oxide sprays. I didn't use oxide sprays on this. I think I used the, um, the Art Alchemy sprays on that one. So it doesn't really matter what sprays you use as long as, you know, I would just use a couple different colors to give it a little interest and depth. Um, there you go, there it is. So what I'm going to do is move that aside so I don't make a mess, get rid of this. And then I'm going to take my sprays. And in this place, I'm, uh, or, um, for this tag, I'm going to use the Fossilized Amber, Abandoned Coral, and the Picked Raspberry. So I'm going to give these a shake of rooney start out with the lightest color and hopefully this will spray sure it will Oof, sprays a little much don't it oh i meant to gesso this first oh well Pfft. gesso it first sorry i'm not gessoing it now because i already sprayed it anyway sorry about that gesso it first maybe you don't have to i mean if you have a light tag and and I don't know. I I think it usually comes out a little better when you gesso it, but just because it gives a little difference, you know. But uh, well, I've already screwed that up. Sorry. So you're gonna gesso yours first, and my sprayer is not working the greatest here. And this way, I can use a little water to kind of move my colors around too and get them to do what I want them to do. But you want to make sure all the white paper is colored so whether that means you have to kind of you know, spray it a lot or 
I'm just utilizing the, what's what's on there to which I'm gonna make a big mess. But you just want to make sure it's like got full coverage, that it's fully covered. And that none of the white paper or gesso, which is supposed to be what's there, <laughs> is showing. So you just want to get under all the bits of paper with your spray um, and make sure that it's got full coverage everywhere. That's the most important thing. Pick up the pieces and get underneath of it. You can use paint as well. You don't have to use spray if you don't want to. After you gesso it, you can use paint. And gessoing it is better because of also, um, when you gesso it, it'll stiffen the paper a little more. And you'll, and you gesso everything, even the background, it'll stiffen the paper more and it will help keep it upright, which is another reason you want to gesso it. Because, yeah, otherwise you're going to have like, you know, my paper might be a little bit floppy because of that, because I didn't gesso it. So we'll see, because typically I always gesso it. All right, I think I pretty much got it. It's soaked to the core, which it wouldn't be as, again, floppy if I had gessoed it, but you know. So yeah, you just throw a coat of gesso over the whole thing. It doesn't have to be a super heavy coat, but just, you know, hit it with a coat of gesso before you do that. Do as I say, not as I do, because it makes, it does work better because it makes it, it, makes the pieces like nice and stiff. Whereas these, whoops, <laughs> screw that up, got my fingers all over it. Um, where this one is not, it might not dry as um, stiff as the other one did. But we gonna give it a try because I had to really soak it to get it to work you know all the paper in so let me dry this it might take a second you can fast forward through this part and as you're drying it just pull up your pieces to, you know at, so that when they dry they're they're drying you know up and not getting trained to dry you know you don't want them to dry downward you want them to dry upwards you know so that they don't flop over
You can also like curl the paper if they're longer, like mine are a little longer than the other ones, but as you're doing, as you're drying it, you can kind of curl them in, like curl them up so they're not just standing straight up. You can kind of give them a little bit of a curl. I just hold the dryer, the, the, the heat gun at a distance so I'm not burning my hands, obviously. Don't want to do that. So you just hold it a little further away as you do it. And it'll still dry it, but at least you're not, you know, burning yourself. Hold on one second, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry. Let me finish drying it. Okay, so now you can, if you have spots, like obviously as you start curling the paper, you're going to see spots that are kind of obviously not completely saturated or, you know, have a lot of white space. So this is where you could take, you know, another squirt of your spray or whatever and use a brush and just go in and like get areas that, you know, that are a little difficult and being a little honorary, and just start getting in between to make sure that all your papers are gotten. I need to care if there's color in between it. Yeah, when you use three colors, it looks better. And hold it at all different angles, because then you'll really see where, like, any of the spots are that need to be, you know, gotten to. If you hold it at different angles and look at it, you can see any white spots. Which I think I did pretty good on this. Not bad. Okay. Not bad. All right. Yeah, it's not as stiff as it would be if you would have gessoed it, but it's not, it's not, it's pretty stiff though still, because it'll, the, the ink or whatever you use, you spray it with and then you dry it and stuff, that's going to, you know, significantly make it a lot stiffer than if you didn't use any, you know, put anything on it. And the nice thing about using three different colors, now that my hands are <laughs> completely inked, which they will be, because you're going to be touching the wet paper as you dry it, so you might want to put gloves on if you don't like your hands dirty. 
Um, but the nice thing about the three different colors is it gives it that, um, I just dropped a thing in the garbage, didn't I? Oh, God, tell me something. Come here. There we go. I found it. I dropped my caps in the garbage like a dumbass. Um, anyway, it gives it that kind of, you know, it gives it a little more personality. If you just did it all one color, it wouldn't look, it wouldn't look nearly as good. Um, so that's why it's good to use three different color sprays or paints if you're using paints. Something that are close together but not exactly the same. You know, three colors that go together. Um, as you can see in this one, I used yellow, like a lime green, and like a teal in this one. Um... And then this one I used the coral, the yellow, which kind of turned orangey, and then the pink. Um, so then you can, you know, if you want to, you could be done with it here and, you know, and then add a sentiment ink, the edges or whatever. But what I like to do and what I did on this one is you could take a, it doesn't have to be metallic, but it just should be a, like either the darkest color or dar a little bit, but the, or the same color as your darkest color, maybe even a little darker. And you could do it in a metallic, which is what I like to do, or you could do it just in a regular paint if you don't want to do it in metallic, as long as you use a darker color, something that's going to pop. So let me grab um, a color. I think this is a metallic red, but it always looks pink. So I'm just going to take a drop of that. And basically you can use your finger and I usually use a little brush because I think it might be a little easier. Um, where's that brush I always use? Maybe it's this one. I use like a tiny brush that has like stiffer bristles on it. And I just go around, oh, no, I know what brush I used, not that one. Where is that little brush at? Because I had to be little. I think it was this one, yeah. It's like a little, you know, you don't want to use anything with real long bristles because you won't have as much control. But you just go in and do all the edges. And then what I also did was I went around all the, that one's supposed to be lifted, but I guess it didn't, um, go around all the edges, like outline, the ones that are glued down and then and then outline it on the top if that makes sense like go around the tops of what shows the most sometimes it's the back side of the paper that shows sometimes it's the front but you don't have to do both sides um but i'm kind of being quick so i'm going to be messier but you want to go around the edges of all the little paper chunks that you you ripped And then outline them. Like I'm doing a really sloppy job, but you want to do a much thinner, neater of application until it's. You're just going to basically outline each piece of paper, basically, what's sticking up and what's glued down in the same color, which I don't know why this brush is not applying a damn thing. Because this is the brush that I used the last time, I'm pretty sure. my glasses on so I can't see a damn thing either but you know you just gotta do the best you can and it'll work out in the end I guess 
but that's the best way to do it. And I really don't know why it's not. Maybe it wasn't this brush. I don't know, but it has to be a very small brush so that you're not applying accidentally applying too much paint and I really don't know what the hell brush it was because I'm just having a hard time remembering what brush it was maybe it was this one I don't know <laughs> and I'd like my glasses because I can't see a damn thing wow I really made a mess out of this oh yeah that brush is not good see the problem with long bristled brushes is they with the even they they end up leaving a fat line because the the bristles get like the bristles like press down too much and you end up with this really fat line and they're too hard to make a fine line with and maybe it's this paint that I'm having a hard time with because it's kind of a weird consistency I didn't use this kind of paint last time but anyway you just got to take your time, which is something I'm not doing right now because I'm trying to get this one section done to show you, but I'm making a huge mess of it. So you really can't even go by what I'm doing here because it should be a bit more neaterized and not rushed through. I mean, it won't take you that long, but if you don't at least take enough time to neaterize it, it won't look as nice. Because I think I, when I did it for the class, it only took me like 15 minutes maximum to outline everything. I feel like I just made this big mess. It's this paint too. This paint is like very weird. It's very sticky paint. Not a very good paint for this type of thing. I should have not used this paint at all because it's not coming off the brush very easily, so I have to push too hard. And if you have to push too hard, then that means you're gonna, then you're gonna put too much pressure and it's not gonna, you're not gonna get nice thin lines out of it. You're gonna get a mess basically. Because this paint is not going on very well at all. Not even a little bit. <laughs> it is really making a giant mess. So this will just be my messy tag. Know what the hell brush and paint I used last time, but it was definitely not this. I don't know why this paint is so goopy, and it always had this consistency. It's a very like weird consistency metallic paint, and none of the other ones are like this. Just this color, like the red one, well, what they consider red, it's really a pink. It's just not. It is just not a very good. It just has a very weird consistency. I can't explain it. It's just not nice to work with because it doesn't want to paint on very smoothly. Um, let's see, because I have to take too much of it on my brush to just make even the littlest mark. Anyway, you get the idea. It's a mess, but it should look more like this. You see how much thinner the lines are on here? than on here because I made such a mess out of it but you just want to outline everything which this doesn't like to focus on anything but I really wish it would once in a while it'd be nice one day I'll find a camera that actually focuses on what I'm doing um, but anyway if you outline it all that's what gives it its pop you know and looks really cool also um, what you can do is um, because you know most of your sprays are water-based you can take a little um a little spray and kind of give it a little spritz so that you get some uh you know watermarks which gives it a little more interest as well and then go through and just pat the pat it dry in areas to pick up any of the excess you can leave it in some areas it'll still do it but don't spray it too much because you don't want to end up with a mess and do it before you paint around the edges too. But yeah, it's a really cool kind of design. It's just interesting. If you like that kind of mixed media background type of thing, real abstract background, 
then you'll like this um, because it's fun and it looks cool. And you could just put like a little sentiment in between there or something, kind of like I did on this one. And just ink the edges with basically whatever you ink those pieces with. And yeah, it turns out pretty cool. Now, like I said, if you gesso it, your pieces will be a little stiffer and they'll be a little bit less. Mine are still a little wet too. Um, but they'll be much like more rigid if you gesso it. So that's why I say gesso it. Um, so yeah, I hope you like this. I hope you'll give it a try. And if you do, put pictures in our Facebook group, which is the Pink Poodle Pack Creative Crafty Playground. And it is linked below in the description. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, or I hope you will enjoy giving it a try and um, playing around with the idea. Maybe, you know, maybe you have a fun use for it. Somebody in the in our Patreon group when I when I did this for the class said it would be a, a good way for her dollhouse. Like she wanted to make the, the walls look like they're peeling paint. And yeah, this would be a great way to make it look like peeling paint if you strate strategically placed the pieces. It would definitely look like, kind of like peeling paint, peeling wallpaper, that's what she meant, peeling wallpaper. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool that way. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people and give this video a share with your friends and I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.